Hi, my name is Robert Feranek. I'm from Federal Academy. And in this video, we are going to speak about this PCB Toolkit software. It is a free software, so anyone can download it. You can download it. And uh, I would like to speak about this software because uh, I use it a lot. I found it very useful and I also recommend it a lot to other people. This uh, software is basically a um, collection of calculators which are useful for engineers. To download this uh, software, just Google for Saturn PCB Toolkit. Go on their website and uh, download it. Once you install and start the software, this is what you will see. And in this video, we will go through every single tab from this uh, PCB toolkit. And we are going to have a look what you can find here. What are these tabs about? So the first tab is called conductor spacing. And here, what do you think how this can be used? I have used this one a number of times uh, for my own projects, uh, but I usually use it when people ask me what kind of spacing they should use if they are designing boards for higher voltages. So if you are, for example, designing a board for 250 volts, then you select this. And uh, depends, uh, depends on your board, uh, you need to select this uh, device type selection. So let's say your board is with external conductors with permanent polymer coating. So you need to select P4. And based on these settings here, you will find the minimum conductor spacing which you should use on your board. Um, now, I need to say in uh, some cases, I uh, use this uh, calculator and I use this uh, information which is here in this PCB toolkit. I just use it as some kind of approximate numbers to get some idea, uh, uh, for example, how much space I need to keep on my PCB or how much current can flow through my trucks, how much current can flow through my vias. Yeah? Just some kind of approximate numbers. It doesn't mean that in my PCB I will use the minimum conductor spacing 0.4 millimeter. Yeah, if uh, I have there a lot of space on my board, I may use one millimeter or even, I don't know, five millimeters. But this gives me an idea that uh, this spacing, what I need to follow, is not like, I don't know, 10 millimeters. Yeah? If you would like to be sure, if you would like to use the exact proper uh, numbers, then you may need to go and uh, study this IPC specification so you see what exactly values you need to use. But in many cases, this number is just fine to give you an idea and then in your PCB you can use something a little bit different, depends what kind of PCB you are designing. The next step is uh, conductor impedance. And I use this one a lot. Uh, I use it uh, when I need to calculate single-ended impedance of a track. And uh, it's very simple to use this calculator. I just put here the width of the track. Yeah. Here you set the thickness of the track. Uh, you select the ER of the dielectricum and the height of the dielectricum, dielectricum and then the impedance is calculated. Again, this uh, number is uh, just, you know, some kind of approximate number. Uh, if you would like to know the real impedance for your specific PCB, you need to talk to your PCB manufacturer. Only your PCB manufacturer can give you the exact real impedance uh, for your PCB. But this calculator is uh, quite good and you will get a good idea uh, about the impedance of your track even without asking your PCB manufacturer. 
The next step is conversion data. And uh, I don't really use this uh, calculator. Usually for conversions, I just use Google. Yeah, it's very simple and very quick. Uh, especially when I don't have this calculator open, I just write into Google. Uh, then uh, planar inductors. Uh, I don't use this, uh, some of these other tabs which are here. So I don't use these planar inductors. Uh, I don't use plane calculator. I don't use thermal. I don't use fusing. I don't use embedded resistors because I, I don't design this kind of boards. I don't use PPM calculator, but I do use sometimes this crosstalk calculator. I highly recommend you to play with this crosstalk calculator because many people, they don't realize how high coupled voltage you can get on a very short uh, distance between tracks. You know, the crosstalk is kind of noise which can be transferred between uh, tracks uh, which are routed in parallel on your PCB. So when you play with this calculator, you can find out that it can be sometimes quite easy to have very high crosstalk on your PCB especially if you are using like two layer PCB, eh? 1.6 millimeter PCB or 63 mm PCB. Watch the coupled voltage on so small or so short distance. So, okay, uh, play with this calculator. Highly recommend it. The next step is wavelength calculator. I don't use this one, but, you know, it can be interesting uh, to play with this one. So you can see what is the length of, uh, of the waves in specific frequency. Yeah, uh, I don't use this one. I don't really use this, uh, but it can be useful for some people. And uh, I don't use this one, but I do use this calculator a lot. What uh, do we have here? I use this calculator when I need to calculate the uh, current which can flow through a via. So especially when you are designing power supplies or when you are doing layout around power supplies on or the layout of power rails, uh, you may need to be sure that you use enough uh, vias to carry the required current. Yeah, so in this calculator, you can uh, put here the parameters of uh, your via and here you can see the current which can flow through this specific via. So very, very useful. And this is uh, one of the uh, calculators which I use a lot uh, from this, or which I use maybe almost the most from all these uh, calculators which are here. The next step is uh, conductor properties. Very similar as for the vias, sometimes you may need to calculate the current which can be carried by a track. And that's the situation when you can use this conductor properties uh, calculator. Here you will simply just put the width of your track. Here you will select the uh, copper thickness on your PCB. And here you can see the current, watch what can be carried by the track. Okay, so again, this can be sometimes very useful the next step is uh, bandwidth and max conductor length. I don't really use this one, but I do use differential pairs calculator. Very similar 
as uh, when we were speaking about conductor impedance. These numbers uh, or this impedance uh, which you will calculate here is not going to be exactly the impedance which you will get on your PCB. Yeah, because uh, during the PCB manufacturing process some of the parameters and properties, some of the materials are going to change, for example, thickness of uh, this uh, isolation is going to change a little bit. So uh, in real PCB, these numbers may be a little bit different, but still the numbers which you can calculate here are quite good and they can help you a lot when you are designing your PCB stack up and when you are designing uh, or when you are thinking and when you are setting up the track geometry which you would like to use on your PCB. So in this differential pairs uh, tab, uh, you can calculate the differential pair impedance for different uh, situations. Here you just put the uh, parameters of the tracks, here you will put the parameters of the PCB and here the impedance, the single-ended and the differential pair impedance is calculated. Now, very important, because I have seen many people making mistakes in this. Be sure uh, you set the total copper thickness right, okay? This total copper thickness is the base copper weight plus plating thickness. If you are not sure what plating means, you can Google for this, but uh, it is basically the process when uh, during PCB manufacturing the copper is put inside of the vias and during this plating process the copper is not only growing inside the vias, it is also growing on the base copper. So that's why the total copper thickness is base copper uh, thickness plus the plating thickness. Okay, so be careful, don't forget to set the total copper thickness correctly when you will be calculating uh, these values. And it's not only about differential pairs, this is used in many calculators, so be very careful, always check the total copper thickness. The next step is pad stack calculator. I don't really use this and also I don't really use this mechanical information. And uh, that's everything for today's video. I really hope you found it useful and I would like to know what you are using. What kind of uh, calculators? Do you use a PCB toolkit? Or do you use different software? Do you use uh, online calculators? Leave comments, okay? I'm really curious to see what other engineers are using uh, during their job, what kind of calculators. Uh, okay, that's really everything for today's video. I would like to thank you very much for watching. If uh, you like this video, please don't forget to press like button. And uh, see you next time. Bye.